Warped was brought to life by amazing design, graphics, audio. Why don't we actually have it feel like the level is tearing itself apart? I was really excited to work on the Demas. These were the first NPCs in RuneScape that we've added this much detail to. Calgare is one of the last bosses in Demonheim and he's going to pose a real challenge. Calgare has some unique and very cool mechanics, some of which we've never seen before. We've added vocals to all the boss demons in Dungeoneering and the reception from the content developers has been fantastic. And let's just actually go for it and... Even though it was really hard, it, it was a big payoff at the end because it's like something that hasn't been done in RuneScape before. We started with um, a meeting that involved myself um, and the lead uh, modeler and the lead animator um, and a couple of the development guys who were working on Dungeoneering at the time. Um, and our focus was how do we make the warped floor look awesome? And we really wanted this floor to feel um, like there was some really malevolent force um, bearing down on it. So like, you know, let's have all these stones that look like they've exploded out of the walls and the floors got cracks and, you know, you can maybe see this demonic light coming through it, you know, to really um, push home the fact that, you know, this, this whole journey that you've been on through Dungeoneering is really leading down to something epic. The Demon Princes were uh, a particular passion because, you know, it's not often you get to design these kind of really big, epic looking um, demon guys. So we had to kind of consider the balance of things like, do we make them look more animalistic? Do we make them look more intelligent? And having spoken to the content guys um, who knew a lot more of the lore and the history behind them, they were like, you know, no, demons are really intelligent um, beings, you know, maybe even more intelligent than uh, humans. My concept's just a, a drawing on a flat piece of paper. So for me to sort of watch that becomes something that then becomes a 3D model, which then becomes animated, which then becomes a character in its own right in this online game. It's, it's really amazing. After receiving the concept, I'll take a look at it, I'll sort of break it down and analyse all the different parts that I have to make. I'll also get animation involved, I'll get them to look at it, and they'll tell me if there's any certain areas that I'll need to build in a certain way for when it's being animated. Like for example, I might have to add extra subdivisions into a certain area that would give it a more better smooth rotation or movement. In his boss room, there were weapons hanging on the walls and we had to figure out how he was then going to grab those weapons and attack the player with them. What I had to do is I had to model the hand separately and I had to build in each of those different weapons into the hand so then they could be swapped out at the correct point when he then grabbed the weapons off the wall. Once that model was all complete, that's when I would actually start adding the colour, the textures and from there it, would, it moves on to animation. The first thing we do when we're given the model is uh, we give it bones so we can make it animate. We then discuss what kind of animations is needed for this demon, for example. This demon actually jumps and flies across this little little trench. Uh, we can't film ourselves do that, so and we just find birds, and see see how they do it, and then I'm trying to imagine it on this uh, on this big demon guy with these wings, trying to carry him across this thing. So then just sketch out the whole scene and uh, try and see where we're going from there. As soon as we're happy with it on paper, we then go into the animator and we, we block out all basic poses first. So like for the jump, he starts down low, ends up high, and then just simple flying animation across the other side. We just keep on doing it over and over again until we're happy with a nice smooth animation, and then we just pass it on to a content developer. The walked floors are our last and most challenging update, uh, our last theme, and for those of you who've got the levels to get there, um, it's, it's going to be a real treat. There's a number of challenges that come with an update like this, uh, not only for you guys as players, uh, but also for us uh, making the asset. The design for this guy was really interesting, and it was something that me and Chris did over a, over a course of time. Uh, you may have noticed from the last video that combat doesn't really suit me, so uh, I handed it over to Chris who fleshed him out, added some attacks and really made him his own. You may have noticed all the demons in Dungeoneering have titles. Calgare is the Warmonger, which is why you'll find him right at the bottom of Demonheim in a room surrounded by massive tier 11 weaponry. You thought the Primal 2 handle was coming and you'd right, but he's got a bigger one and he's got a Sagittarian short bow to go with it, so watch out because this guy is a demon sized weapon switcher. I met some great Dungeoneering enthusiasts at RuneFest and the discussions we had definitely inspired some of Calgare's final attacks. I won't say who made the final cut, but let's just say if you're fighting him and you think he's too hard, think about what you told me at RuneFest. On the final build of Calgare, when we were all happy with the gameplay, we moved on to the last thing which was audio and I myself did the voice for Calgare. We had five content developers, one for each of the demons. Um, essentially we got them into the booth one by one to record their lines, which we got them to repeat lots and lots of times. Having vocals on all the demons raised the, the enjoyment of the boss battle so much because it was like you were fighting a real character.
The further you go into the dungeon, the more sparse, the more weird the music became and the area sounds were triggering randomly and just trying to freak it out a little bit. So essentially the deeper you go, um, the further you're getting away from the surface and the further you're getting away from a sense of no normal reality. The dungeoneering themes may be complete now, but that doesn't mean we've told the full story. You'll have to stay tuned for more information about the key people as well as the strange power.